Good morning students. So today we are going to learn about surgical orthodontics. I am Dr. Shamla from Department of Orthodontics and in today's class we will be learning about the various surgical procedures that we do okay as an orthodontist and what are the indications contraindication and when to do what surgery right so diving into the detail surgical orthodontic refers to the various surgical procedures that are carried out as a part of your overall treatment plan right so it involves even your fixed orthodontics as well it doesn't mean that immediately the patient has to go for surgery it is a step by step procedure when you think that the patient is a surgical case right so we'll be learning in detail about that so it can be used in, as an adjunct or in conjugation with your orthodontic treatment it can be carried out before during or after completion of your orthodontic treatment depending upon the situation right these surgical procedures are carried out basically to uh, remove or eliminate an etiological factor right or to correct a severe deformities in the dentofacial region that cannot be treated with your growth modification or your orthodontic camouflage that means your fixed orthodontic treatment okay so anything which cannot be corrected with your normal orthodontic treatment which involves your fixed orthodontics and you know other things it has to go for a surgical management right okay now surgical procedures are usually carried out to eliminate the existing etiological factor as a part of your treatment plan facilitate correction of malocclusion by orthodontic techniques stabilize the results of your orthodontic treatment that you have achieved and prevent relapse and to correct the severe skeletal discrepancy Right. So now what are the surgical procedures that we carry out in orthodontics? It can be basically divided into minor and major, right? So under minor procedures, you will have extractions. Under the extractions, you have therapeutic extraction, serial extraction, extraction of carious, malformed, supernumerary or impacted teeth. Right. Then you have surgical exposure of unerupted teeth, phrenectomy, perecision, transplantation of teeth and corticotomy. Now don't worry, don't get overwhelmed. We will be all seeing in detail on how it is and what we do. We have some pictures, okay, so it will be easy for you to grasp. Now we have major procedures such as your extensive uh, correction of your surgical correction of your jaws, cosmetic surgeries, uh, correction of your cleft open palate and your SAP, which is the surgical maxillary palatal expansion, right? Now, a minor surgical procedure, the main aim here is to remove the etiological factor and to facilitate correction of malocclusion by orthodontic appliance, okay? And also it helps to stabilize the results that we re receive after the orthodontic treatment to prevent any relapse. Now, when I say extractions, the various extraction procedures carried out as a part of your orthodontic treatment are your therapeutic extractions, right? So, therapeutic extractions are extractions undertaken as a part of a comprehensive orthodontic treatment, mainly to gain space, right? So, you have a crowding, okay, you have lack of space. So you gain the space, right, by doing some extractions. Now, the most common, you all know, teeth to be extracted are your premolars. Maybe your first, maybe your second, okay? But premolars in general. So extraction should be atraumatic as any break in continuity of alveolar plate may hinder the progression of your orthodontic tooth movement, right? And when to extract and when not to extract will depend upon each scenario. For permanent teeth, okay, we usually don't extract the central incisors, right? Uh, very, very rarely. And laterals, very rarely. Canines, definitely not because it is the one which enhances your aesthetics. It is also called as the cornerstone of your arch. So, no. First premolars, definitely when you require more than 4 mm of space, okay? And second premolars, 2 to 4 mm of space, depending upon what type of tooth movement you require. Okay, so there, are, there is a lot of works and thinking that goes into whether you want to extract your first or the second premolars, right? First molars, unless and until it is compromised, okay, and it cannot be uh, saved, okay, it is usually preferred for extraction, right? Second molars, basically, 
you don't extract but if you do it is basically for distal movement or distalization of your first molar okay now moving on to serial extractions as you all know serial extraction is a form of interceptive orthodontic treatment right which aims to relieve crowding at an early stage so that in future the fixed orthodontic treatment could be eliminated right so serial extraction is a series of extractions that we do okay to prevent any uh, future ortho treatment okay so there are three methods of serial extraction okay you have the tweets method you have the duels method and you have the nance method right so tweets method is basically done or mostly everything is done around eight to nine years of age so what they say in tweets method is dc4 right so dc4 is a short form of deciduous molars your canines and then your first premolars right and duels method is cd4 okay that is your canines first then your molars first and then your first permanent molar premolars right nans method is d4c okay so this is very important this is your short answers uh, mcq question and also your short notes and can be a part of your meq questions now extraction of supernumerary impactor and ankylosed teeth right the presence of supernumerary impactor or ankylosed teeth impede the normal development of your occlusion of course okay and are considered one of the most important local factors of malocclusion the common supernumerary teeth that you see is the mesiodents lower premolars okay then your incisors your molars and in upper you see mostly the canine area right your supernumerary teeth now how do you extract the supernumerary so example of your impacted canine how do you do that so just listen to what i'm going to tell right so it is easier for you so prior to extraction definitely it is an impacted tooth okay you have to keep that in mind so you have to take a radiograph right so depending upon the position okay of the tooth okay you have to um, formulate a plan whether you have to reflect the buccal flap or you want to go reflect the palatal flap depending upon the position how the tooth is placed right then you of course give an la right and elevate the flap after reflecting the flap you remove the bone around the tooth right yes then you remove the tooth atraumatically and irrigate the socket and you reposition the fl uh, flap and suture it right and after a week or two you remove the suture so that is basically the entire procedure now whether if you want to bring that impacted tooth into the occlusion you see that the position of the tooth is favorable and it is vertical and there is a space where it can be brought out into the occlusion so what do you do so definitely you have to put the fixed appliance first you have see the wire here okay then you have a special attachment of course you have to put the uh, expose the procedure is the same elevating the flap sorry give the la elevating the flap and uh, rem uh, remove the bone okay expose the crown or the structure of the tooth then you apply the acid etchant dentin bonding agent and composite and fix some special attachments okay like your uh, e-chain or your elastics or your springs or a chain okay and bring this back into here in your occlusion right okay. well, this is the same thing i was talking to you about but it is given in much detail the presence of impacted tooth in the dental arch can cause minor dental irregularities due to deflection of adjacent teeth. Impaction of teeth usually occurs as a result of arch length discrepancy. Definitely you have an arch length discrepancy. That's why the tooth has not erupted and it is way down, right? Or it is the presence of any mucosal or bony barriers that is preventing its eruption. The most commonly impacted tooth is your maxillary permanent canine. In many cases, it is possible for the orthodontist to guide the canine into normal location after adequate surgical exposure. Okay, so what are the steps that you need to undertake in the management of the impacted tooth? Definitely, location is very important. Right? 
So exact location of your impacted tooth has to be determined, right? This can be done using Clark's tube shift technique or right angle technique. Most impacted teeth present a bulge, okay? So when you put your glove, your finger, okay, and you palpate the region, you will see a bulge, okay? So that bulge will be, uh, um, you know, determined when you press or run your fingers on that area, right? It should be examined by inspection and palpation. Now, how to know whether the tooth is favorable or unfavorable for extraction, right? So, in many cases, the orientation of your impacted teeth may be such that your orthodontic guidance into the arch may not be possible. So, example, you're severely horizontally impacted, flat underneath, okay, which you cannot bring into occlusion, okay, you, have, you need to extract it right the favorability should be examined prior to the procedure okay so you have to take a cbct you have to take a radiograph assess whether it can be brought or not okay you have to do it prior rather than opening up the patient okay and then you see there then you see it cannot be you know so it has to be planned okay whether you want to do it or not to do it okay now evaluation of space availability okay so First, you must understand that analyzing the space is very, very important. Okay. Yes. So, whether the space is enough for your impacted tooth to come into occlusion. Okay. If not, then whether you can create that space. Okay. Whether you want it or not. Okay. So, it all depends upon so many factors. Right. Surgical excision and bone removal. Now, the crown of the impacted teeth is exposed, okay, as I said previously into step by step procedure, and the bone should be removed up to the maximum height of contour, right? Now, fixing the orthodontic attachments, okay, is done as I said previously, okay, so I'm not going into much detail, just know the entire procedure, how it's done, and what are the steps, right? Next topic is Prenectomy, right? So there are phenom problems. Midline diastema between the two maxillary central incisors. Okay, so when you see the phenom is the problem, the most common malocclusion associated with it will be your midline diastema, right? So if you all remember from the previous class, okay, how do you know whether the phenom is the problem? Okay, you do something called as the Blanche test. Okay, so now there are two schools of thought one before either you remove the frenum before your orthodontic treatment or in the middle or after the orthodontic treatment. Okay, regardless of what you do, okay, understand that you just cannot clip the frenum, you have to remove it or excise it totally. Okay, from the intermaxillary area, right? Okay, so you see the frenum here. Okay, so you hold it with the hemostat. Okay and then you excise it okay you excise it completely you suture it okay yes so you give a suture like that and completely excise you put the brackets okay and you close the space all right so this is how you do a phrenectomy now there is something called as corticotomy right now in some situations you may see a patient coming to you and say that doctor i have a wedding in say about eight months or ten months and i want you to correct my teeth yes and uh, we have less time so you have to you know correct my malocclusion and make it aesthetic or do something like that okay and you are or a patient telling i want to go abroad for studies i want to do uh, my uh, you know treatment here i want to do it faster so you can think about a procedure called as corticotomy okay so it is a surgical procedure usually undertaken in patients having dental proclinations with spacing right so what do you do it involves sectioning of your bone okay into multiple small units right uh, all of you know how a tooth moves during orthodontic treatment, right? Yes, yeah, so you know there is a pressure happening in a pressure, uh, sorry, there is a pressure side, there is a tension side, okay? So you know all of that, okay? So imagine when you have to move your teeth through the bone, okay? Will it take a longer time or if you section the bone, it will move faster? Yes, yeah, so think about it. Definitely when you section the bone, it will happen faster, right? So, labial flaps are raised and interdental bones are cut parallel to the long axis of the tooth, right? Something like this, okay? 
So, you have the area here you have extracted okay, and you want to bring the proclination back. So, you, what do you do? You remove the flap, you do an interdental section of your bone vertical to the long axis of the tooth. Okay, then you put the braces and since it is section into individual uh, units, it is easier to close and retract back. Okay, yes, yeah? so that is how a cototomy is done. Now, next thing uh, in surgical procedures is your perisation or circumferential supracrystal fibrotomy or CSF. Okay, so this can be your short answers, your MCQ question, right? So, perisation or CSF as it is often called is a minor surgical procedure that is undertaken to counter the relapse tendency of your gingival fibers, okay. So, you know that it is going to relapse, so previously itself, okay. So, before itself you section the fibers so that it does not relapse back, okay. So, it involves surgical sectioning of these fibers by passing a sharp scalpel through the sulcus, okay. So, through the sulcus you pass a scalpel, okay, around the tooth to a depth of 2 to 2 mm, 2 to 2.5 mm, a pical to your alveolar crest, okay. So, you do that. It is generally undertaken as a procedure which you do when you are doing a retention regime, right. Next is transplantation of teeth. Now, transplantation of teeth has been advocated as an alternative to other methods of treatment of impacted teeth, right? It may be a good alternative for the adult patient who cannot undergo conventional orthodontic movement of an impacted teeth. To ad the advocated technique is a careful wide exposure of your impacted teeth. The tooth is done Okay, the tooth is then removed to its position <coughs> within the dental arch and stabilized with a segmental orthodontic appliance. Right? And then endodontic treatment if necessary is rendered 6 to 8 weeks after the surgical procedure. Okay, then a conventional root canal filling is done one year later. Now, teeth may be transplanted from one position to another in dental arch. Now, understand the term transplantation. What do you think it is? Yes, when you move something from one place to another, it is called transplantation. Right? Now, moving on to orthognathic surgeries. Right? So, orthognathic surgeries is very, very important part of surgical orthodontics right there are major procedures now till now we were seeing about minor surgical procedures so now we are seeing about major surgical procedures okay they are carried out along with orthodontic therapy to correct severe dentofacial deformities which cannot be corrected with fixed orthodontics okay so of course as i said previously there are steps when you do a when it is a surgical case right so you do a preoperative evaluation then you do a pre-surgical orthodontics, you do a mock surgery before the actual surgery, then you do a surgery and stabilization and post-surgical orthodontics. What comes or what do you do under pre-operative evaluation? Okay, so definitely before any surgical procedures, you have to do a general medical examination. Okay, then you estimate the social and psychological evaluation of the patient. Cephalometrically, you make measurements and understand where the problem is and how you want to correct it. Then take radiographs, intraoral, extraoral, OPG, okay, to assess the various um, angles of the case and then study model evaluation and your TMJ evaluation. Now, pre-surgical orthodontics definitely cannot be exceeded more than one year, okay. So, tooth alignment, whether you want to correct the rotation spacing with either removable or fixed uh, appliances okay everything has to be corrected before you send the patient for surgery okay if you want to coordinate the arch and correct the cross bite okay molar relation incisive proclination okay and they say that decompensation that is little bit or uh, you know you can do a decompensation okay by changing the axial inclination of the tooth right 
Now, what is a mock surgery? Definitely, you don't take the patient to surgical ward and do a mock surgery. It is something that you do outside in a model, right? So, you take the patient's upper and lower impressions, okay? You articulate it in an articulator, okay? You see how much mm of maxilla you want to correct or take it back or push it forward and how much of mandible you want to correct. Everything you see the measurement and do it on the cast and then on the day of write it down and then in the day of surgery it helps you to uh, it's easier for you to do it right so surgery and stabilization so it involves whatever you have done to stabilize it by intermaxillary fixation right so you have the surgical uh, splints that we give after any surgery to hold what you have achieved okay and give some time for the bone to heal okay and adapt to the new position that we have achieved so you have to fixate it right then you have post-surgical orthodontics right so any finishing and detailing or anything that you want to correct later it has to be done during the phase of post-surgical orthodontics right and there is something called as cosmetic surgery most of you know okay and most celebrities do also which is rhinoplasty and to uh, you know genioplasty to enhance the, that to bring about the prominent chin there now this one i have made for you all to you know simplify and understand on which skeletal problem or skeletal deformity what surgery has to be done okay so for exam it will be easier for you to understand if you see the chart it is actually very easy okay so just look here if you have a mandibular prognathism okay understand the term mandibular prognathism your mandible is prognathic it's forward okay so what do you do you do a sagittal split osteotomy okay where both the sides you remove the bone and then you push the mandible back when it is prognathic definitely you push it back okay so it is called as bsso bilateral sagittal split osteotomy right and we have if you have mandibular retrognathism okay that means mandible is retrognathic you want to bring it forward right so it is called as bilateral sagittal split osteotomy with mandibular advancement you want to advance the mandible forward now if you have a chin deficiency you will do a genioplasty right just to push the chin or to bring forward right if you have maxillary retrusion or hypoplasia you have to do something called as leafoot one osteotomy with advancement okay definitely right if you have maxillary protrusion you do a segmental setback right you put only the anterior segment if you want to push it back entire maxilla you want to push it back so it depends upon what the situation is right if you have vertical excess right you have a gummy smile okay so you have a maxillary excess vertical excess you need to do an impaction you push the maxilla upwards right if you have an open bite then you do something called as anterior segmental osteotomy okay and if you have a deep bite, you do a lower dentoalveolar segmental osteotomy. It depends upon where, which is the problem. Whether the maxilla is the problem, the mandible is the problem. Okay. So I hope you all understood this chart. It is pretty simple. Okay. It's just common sense. You just have to understand what the situation is and how you have to deal with it. This is very important. Okay. You, I don't know if you have seen this in surgery. It is called as envelope of discrepancy okay so basically it is an envelope as you all can see there are three envelopes here you have the inner orthodontic envelope you have the orthopedic envelope and then you have the orthognatic envelope so basically this envelope of discrepancy is for to help you in which case you have to go for surgery and which case not for example in this case you see this upper incisor right so the normal over jet is about say 2 mm yes so if it is 7 mm it is still can be correct it is inside which envelope it is inside the orthodontic envelope right so it can be corrected using your fixed orthodontic appliances right when you see an over jet of 12 mm right if it is a growing patient right if it is a growing patient you can go for orthopedic appliances right yes and still 
you need to undergo fixed orthodontic treatment. But when you see an overjet and maxilla going about 15 mm, it comes around your orthognathic surgery circle. Okay, so that has to be taken into consideration in surgical aspect. Okay, so the same follows for your extrusion or a deep bite or your open whether you want to intrude or extrude or retrude. Okay, so there are few measurements which helps you to know you know at what how much mm to do what treatment right this follows the same for your lower arch as well right so it is very important to know this because this can be your short answers or your mcq question okay now i was talking to you previously about um leaf foot one osteotomy right so this is how we do okay so you have the maxillary okay arch you section it like an l shape okay leaf foot one osteotomy which is usually done i'm sure you all know by now in the maxilla okay so you cut the maxilla i don't want you to go in detail about how you do the surgery just know the name of in what malocclusion you do what surgery right so you yes so you um, cut the maxilla okay yes section it separate it and then you push it forward and do an intermaxillary fixation and fix it with plates like this okay so that's how you do it now next i was talking to you about bilateral sagittal split osteotomy right so as you all can see here yeah i was talking to you it is then basically in the mandible okay so you have the l-shaped section here okay so you need to section it like that on both sides okay here also and here also okay and then you section it and push this entire segment over here behind okay so you yes so you push it behind or you do an advancement depending upon what you want all right so either you want to advance the mandible or you want to push it back it all depends upon what the situation is now i was talking to you about cosmetic surgery which is one of the most common that they do is genioplasty okay to get that nice prominent uh, chin right to get the um, facial height there okay a good chin so what they do is they do something called as a genioplasty right so they do a genioplasty okay so what they do is basically you have the arch okay you cut a section here into the bone okay you cut there and then you just slide little bit of the bone in the front okay so you slide in the front and you put some screws here and here okay so that it is adapted to the new position okay and it gives the nice the prominent chin okay how much mm you want to bring forward and how much back okay we have all softwares for that okay and the cosmetic surgeon has a software and the plastic surgeon has a software for that so you can push how much mm and you can see actually how your face will look before and how how it was before and how it will change after your surgery right so these are the few surgical procedures that they are, you know you carry out in orthodontics i hope you all understood the class and if there are any doubts please post it on e portal okay and ask your queries right so stay home stay stay safe take care of your loved ones thank you all of you